I'm Eric Stackelbeck, and today marks the 85th birthday of Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei. It's a big day for the Iranian regime, and the fireworks began in Iran early this morning. But it wasn't exactly the type of birthday blowout that the aging terror master and his minions had in mind. The skies above Isfahan in central Iran lit up in the middle of the night as Israel responded to last weekend's unprecedented Iranian barrage, which saw Khamenei, the birthday boy, order the first ever direct Iranian attack on the Jewish state. Iran and its proxies launched over 300 projectiles at Israel, ballistic and cruise missiles, attack drones. And while Israel and its allies intercepted an astounding 99% of those incoming projectiles, Israel had to respond. And respond it did overnight, in a more limited fashion than some may have expected. Israel reportedly struck an Iranian military airbase in Isfahan, and folks, that is significant because Isfahan is also home to a major Iranian nuclear installation. Now, Israeli leaders are not commenting on the Isfahan strike or claiming any responsibility, and the Iranian regime is downplaying it. So, has the moment for a major confrontation now passed, or is this the calm before the storm? Joining us now from our Jerusalem studio to break it down is our TBN Israel correspondent Yair Pinto and Joel Rosenberg, host of the Rosenberg Report right here on TBN. Gentlemen, welcome. Yair, let's start with you. You and I have been talking here throughout the week on Stackelbeck tonight about this coming Israeli response. What message do you think Israel wanted to send here and why Isfahan as the target? Okay, Eric, so Israel is sending a clear message to the Iranian regime, and the message is this. Israel can reach you wherever it wants to, and in the heart of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Isfahan is located in the heart of Iran. And not just that, Isfahan is an area in which Iran has nuclear facilities. So not just we can attack them wherever it hurts, in the heart of their country. We can attack their nuclear facilities if needed to. And that's a strong message. And we see that the Iranians did not officially accuse Israel of this attack, so they don't want to escalate the situation any further. On the other side, as you said, the Israelis did not took responsibility officially. So it looks like both sides are trying to play it down, but this is the Middle East. Anything can change very fast. Yeah, just look at last weekend, Yair, when we were all here analyzing what happened, this unprecedented Iranian attack. Joel, how much do you think political and diplomatic uh, considerations played into this? Look, the Biden administration, European leaders had been pressuring Israel throughout the week to not respond at all. How much of a factor was that in this limited strike that we saw last night? Yeah, Eric, I think it was absolutely uh, outrageous and reprehensible that President Biden was so openly demanding that uh, Israel not retaliate after 320 missiles and suicide drones, 85 tons of, uh, of explosives were fired by Iran. As though Israel is the one that's gonna trigger a Middle East war, that we are in a Middle East war. So, but yes, there are a lot of considerations that Netanyahu and the war cabinet are having to uh, uh, sift through, right? On one hand, you don't wanna tick off Biden because we needed uh, Biden's veto at the UN on Thursday, right? When, uh, uh, when 12 countries try to jam down our throat a unilaterally, unilaterally declared Palestinian state. We need the uh, uh, United States to pass the $26 billion emergency military aid package for us this weekend. We need uh, the United States to continue to send us ammunition and missile and drone interceptors, right, because we're burning through those at a very high rate. Uh, and we want to keep the Europeans and the Sunni Arabs working with us against Iran. We don't want to tick them off. So there's a, there's a lot of considerations. I want to see a much bigger strike soon. 
uh, against Iran. We've got to take out their nuclear and missile facilities before Iran gets the bomb. But I think this was the right choice right now because I think there's a lot of a lot of work that uh, Netanyahu and his team have, and his colleagues have to do to shore up these alliances. Joel, you mentioned that nuclear program. We've been mentioning here on the show throughout the week, what if those missiles incoming last week to Jerusalem were nuclear tipped? That's Iran's ultimate goal. And Yair, when we look at the limited strike last night, some are saying, at least here in the States, in the mainstream media, that the Rafah operation, the coming Rafah operation, was a big factor. Possibly the Biden administration. If Iran was limited with Iran, then maybe they'd get behind a Rafah operation. Do you get the sense, and you've spent time on the ground in Gaza in recent months, do you get the sense that that Rafah operation may be coming sooner rather than later? Yes, Eric, definitely. I think that Israel and the defense establishment in the Jewish state are focused on finishing the job against Hamas. And Rafah is the last bastion that Hamas still holds in the Gaza Strip. And it will not be easy to finish Hamas there because of the 1.4 million Palestinian civilians that are still being kept in that area. So Israel needs international support in order to conduct this operation in order to achieve the goal of dismantling Hamas. And definitely the reason not to draw in another major front is to focus our efforts against Hamas in Rafah. But one more thing is that it is important is that Israel, during this strike against Iran, launched multiple strikes in Syria and in Lebanon, neutralizing leaders of the Iranian proxy organizations that operate there. So we are still fighting Iranian proxies in the northern front of this country, as well as Hamas in the Gaza Strip. The war is still ongoing. Yeah, Yair, great point there. Look, Israel also struck at that Iranian ring of fire last night, in, in not only Iran directly. Joel, we've got about a minute left. It seems wise that, look, Israel obviously is facing a Gaza conflict right now and one soon to come in the north in Lebanon with Hezbollah. It seems like it is wise for Israel right now to focus on those two fronts rather than a larger confrontation with Iran. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think this is absolutely right. It, look, Netanyahu, as you know and you've reported in the past, has wanted to take out Iran's nuclear facilities since 2012, but couldn't muster, you know, full cabinet and military support. Now he has that support, but the question is timing. It's sequencing. We've got to win in Gaza. We've got to defeat Hamas and get our hostages back. That's our number one priority. Then we have to turn towards Hezbollah, if Iran wants to play direct, which they've now come out of the shadows in an unprecedented fashion, we will go after them. We've got more power than they do, and we've got a coalition. But I think it's a matter of sequencing. Gentlemen, in the time we have left, uh, real quick, Hezbollah, look, some 80,000, maybe even 100,000 Israelis evacuated from the north. It seems that it's inevitable that is, you were just there the other day, Yair, you, you joined us here live uh, after a drone crashed near you and your crew. In the short time we have left, about 35 seconds, it seems like that's inevitable, that coming Great Northern War. Joel, you first, and Yair, what do you think? Yeah, we're going, we're going in big. We've got to push Hezbollah up back 15, 20 miles, 25 miles away from our borders, or our people are not going to return. And that will not be politically or morally acceptable here in Israel. Yair, I think you're along the same lines as Joel with that. What are your thoughts? There is no other alternative. The IDF must actively push Hezbollah away from the border with Israel in order for the citizens to get back to their homes. Wow. No other way. Tumultuous times in the world's most tumultuous region, region, and what happens in the Middle East does not stay in the Middle East. That's why we're so glad we have Joel and Yair. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being with us. Shabbat Shalom and stay safe. We'll see you again soon.